Good evening and welcome to St. Edward's for our celebration of the Sacrament of Confirmation. We especially welcome all our guests and visitors this evening. Before we begin, we ask that you please silence your cell phones. Thank you. Our presider this evening is Bishop McClory. Please stand and join us in singing our opening song found in your worship aid, One Spirit, One Church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. And my dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still, the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us 
a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Oremos, te pedimos Dios omnipotente y misericordioso, que venga a nosotros el Espíritu Santo, que se diñe habitar en nuestros corazones y nos perfeccione como templos de su gloria. Por nuestro Señor Jesucristo, tu Hijo, que vive y reina contigo en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, y es Dios por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed to them, You who are Jews, indeed, all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man commended to you by God, with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs which God worked through him in your midst, as yourselves know. This man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men to crucify him. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses, exalted at the right hand of the God. He received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured it forth as you both see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the spirit of truth, which the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows it, but you know it because it remains with you and will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Will those to be confirmed from the parish of St. Edward please stand and remain standing. Bishop McClory, I present to you our candidates to be confirmed. Thank you, Father Holly. Can you testify that those to be confirmed are ready to receive the sacrament of confirmation? Bishop McClory, with the affirmation of those who are entrusted with their sacramental preparation and spiritual formation, I attest that they are prepared to receive the sacrament of confirmation. Those of you to be confirmed, I have one question for you right now. The answer, nice and strong, will be I do. Do you desire to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon you in the sacrament of confirmation? Thank you. You may be seated. All right, I'm going to see if you can repeat after me. Holy Spirit. Okay, one more time. Holy Spirit. You are welcome here. Holy Spirit. You are welcome here. Can anybody tell me where you can find that phrase in this church? Anybody? Any? No, you don't count, Father. Ray, all right, you're pointing back there. So if you look above this image of the Holy Spirit, that's the very expression phrase that you will see. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Now, I'm glad I get to draw attention to this. Uh, last year when I was here, I guess, I, I don't know, I won't say I accused Father Holly. I suspected that this was a temporary installation just for the confirmation itself. And Father reminded me, he says, Bishop, we want to make sure the Holy Spirit is acknowledged and recognized here. And in fact, this, along with many other beautifications of the church, uh, is a permanent fixture here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And what a beautiful thing for a community to pray today. To say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. First of all, it addresses the Holy Spirit. It's a prayer directed to the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we don't always pray to the Holy Spirit. We kind of pray around the Holy Spirit. Or we add the Holy Spirit's name at the conclusion, you know, the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. But the invocation of the Holy Spirit is something that doesn't just occur at confirmation, but it occurs every day of our life. Now, my father, who lived to 95 beautiful years, every day prayed to the Holy Spirit. Every day he asked for the Holy Spirit to guide him. He asked for the Holy Spirit to be welcome in his own life. You see, the conferral of the sacrament of confirmation does two things. It will give you more of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You want to know what the gifts of the Holy Spirit are? If you don't have them memorized, and don't worry, I'm not going to ask you right now, you'll see them listed here on the left. So we're saying, like, this is what you will receive. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, sometimes that's translated as courage, knowledge, piety and fear of the Lord, fear of the Lord being kind of a reverent sense of the awesomeness of God when you're in God's presence. And so it's great. You can receive more of the Holy Spirit because who doesn't need more wisdom or understanding, right? Counsel, you know, good judgment, fortitude, courage, knowledge, piety, fear of the Lord. Those things are all there to help us. And to help us grow, we see the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So somebody who has the Holy Spirit, you can look at their life and see some of these fruits. All of them, pray God. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, 
and self-control. And since I'm looking back here for this lawn, let's give our choir a nice round of applause, okay? <laughs> so the sacrament of confirmation, when I impose the oil, and I'll say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, that's asking the Holy Spirit, who you received at baptism, to come and give you all those gifts that you need to be sealed in your life, that you'll be marked with the Holy Spirit, that you'll receive more of the Holy Spirit. And so that's one part of what confirmation does. It, it gives us those gifts, which sounds great. You know, we, we get to be able to function with the power of the Holy Spirit, and that can be a, it is a great way to live. So it means you could be in a situation and you say, Lord, uh, boy, I need your wisdom here. Holy Spirit, show me what I should do. I'm not sure what I should do. I need your wisdom. Or you could say, you know, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm afraid. I, I don't have courage. I need the courage, I need the fortitude to do what I know is right. And boy, every parent here, everybody who loves you would want you to have those two things. To know what you should do in a situation. Have the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Not just opinions of other people, but to know the Holy Spirit. And then if you know the will of the Holy Spirit, I know all your parents are praying, boy, I hope they choose to do the right thing, you know? I hope they have the courage to do what they know they should do in light of the Holy Spirit. I mean, those two gifts alone, you know, can set you up for life in the most beautiful way possible. And so it means that when we say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here, that's not just for today, but it's, Holy Spirit, guide me. Um, what classes should I take? What career should I pursue? Should I pursue marriage? Should I pursue religious, priestly, single life? Guide me. Who am I supposed to marry? What am I supposed to do? Give me your wisdom. And over time, if we live always inviting the Holy Spirit in, the Holy Spirit truly does guide us. And people will see something in your life and they'll say, boy, you're a good person to talk to because you're a good listener. And I noticed when everyone else seemed really upset and distraught, you had a calmness about you. And I could tell that you were praying when nobody else was. And I saw you reach out to somebody in the corner of the room that nobody spoke to, but you did. And I could see how kind and gentle you are. And it seems to me like you're the one who always helps other people. And it looks like, now, do you go to church? What, how do you, wow. So suddenly people see in our lives all these gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So here's what makes confirmation a little different than baptism. Because with confirmation, it's not just great, I'm getting more of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but there comes with it an obligation, which is a word that can be intimidating. Here's what the catechism says. So first of all, you're enriched with the special strength of the Holy Spirit, more perfectly bound to the church. And then as true witnesses of Christ, more strictly obliged to spread and defend the faith by word and deed. And so it means that we need to be prepared by what we say and by what we do to show other people that the Holy Spirit is alive and that we invite them into this relationship with God with us. Spread and defend the faith. So it means when somebody says, hey, what is it? How can you, how can you do that? How, how Help me to understand, how can you live this beautiful way? And you can say, look, I'm, no, I, I'm not better than anybody else, but I do pray to the Holy Spirit. I go to church. I'm trying to live as a faithful Catholic. And that gives meaning and purpose to my life. Is, can I pray for you? Is there something I can do for you right now? And so we give witness to the hope that is within us. We give a reason for it. And we say, because I have spent my life saying, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are invited. We want you to be here with us. We need you to be here with us. You know, with St. Peter, we have the beautiful passage from the Acts of the Apostles today. And the backdrop for St. Peter is he was somebody whose heart was in the right place. Okay. He, he wanted to defend Jesus at all costs. But then what happened? We just heard this a week and a half ago before Easter. Despite what he wanted to do, it's like he couldn't back it up 
with his actions. And so he said, Lord, you know, he cut off a soldier's ear to defend the Lord. But then when the time really got tough and Jesus was being led to his passion, you know, he was huddled around a fire and denied three times that he even knew Jesus. So like, what did he need? He needed the Holy Spirit. And so we know how that turned out. I mean, Jesus not only forgave him three times for the betrayal, but then he fulfilled the promise that he said here, because what Jesus said is, look, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you an advocate to be with you always, the spirit of truth. So, so don't worry. I got you covered. I'm sending the Holy Spirit. And so it was after the Holy Spirit. We're told when the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, there suddenly came a strong driving wind, tongues of fire rested on them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And then... Soon after that, Peter gets up in front of the whole assembly, and this was Peter, you know, who maybe had the wisdom but needed the courage, maybe had the understanding but needed the fortitude. Peter goes with confidence, raises his voice, proclaims to them, gives them the whole gospel story. Look, you all saw this. It's Jesus of Nazareth. He came, and he fulfilled all the scriptures. And you saw the miracles that he did, but you know that they turned against him. But even though they put him to death, you were all witnesses to the fact that we saw him rise again. And this same Jesus was raised up. We've seen it. And he received the promise of the Holy Spirit and poured it forth, as you see in here. So Peter was given that strength, that courage, that fortitude to do what was right. Congratulations that you will be receiving more of the Holy Spirit today. But for all of us, those of us who were confirmed 60 years ago and those of us who were confirmed one year ago, we always pray that prayer, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Because it's not just receiving the Holy Spirit in the sacrament, but it's in calling upon the Holy Spirit every day. Holy Spirit, guide me. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Holy Spirit, use me. And when we do that, that is a spirit-filled life. That is a great way to live. So one more time, repeat after me, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. you are welcome here. You are welcome here. Amen. At this time, those of you to be confirmed may please stand. So now I have some questions for you. The same answer applies. It's just, I do. And these are the baptismal promises. Now, your parents and your godparents would have said yes to these statements when you were baptized, and now it's your opportunity to say, I do. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth 
by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Please stand. Queridos hermanos, oremos a Dios Padre Todopoderoso, unidos en la misma fe, en la misma esperanza. 
en la misma caridad que proceden del Espíritu Santo. Lord God, we present these prayers before you. For our church that is enriched by the gift of the young people, will always be diligent in bringing the good news to the Christ of Christ to the world. Let us let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among all nations, that violence and hatred might be healed for, by forgiveness and tolerance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly confirmed, that we will always rely upon the gifts of the Holy Spirit in our daily living. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our confirmation class, that given the gift of courage, we may always choose to live the life that Christ leads us to. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a listening heart that will enable us to discern God's call of vocation and for the strength and wisdom to follow that call. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families, classrooms, and neighborhoods, that they will be places of compassion and respect because of Christ and the Spirit working in and through us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dios y Padre nuestro, que diste el Espíritu Santo a los apóstoles, y estableciste que por medio de ellos y sus sucesores, ese mismo Espíritu se transmitiera a todos los fieles. Escucha benévolo nuestra oración para que aquello que obró tu favor en los comienzos mismos de la predicación evangélica, ahora también lo difunda por medio de los corazones de los creyentes, por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Amén. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice 
and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and all this holy church. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as they share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit, <coughs> through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, Lord, your servants, whom you have been pleased to confirm today by bestowing the Holy Spirit and keeping them in your grace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostle and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thou's frontamente la paz, let us hear a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Oremos. Señor, estos hijos tuyo recién confirmados, a quienes has comado con los dones de tu espíritu, y alimentado con el cuerpo y la sangre de tu hijo, concédeles vivir en el amor la plenitud de tu ley, para que manifesten al mundo la libertad que las, les da ser hijos tuyos, el carisma profético de tu pueblo santo, por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amen. Let's give a nice round of applause for our newly confirmed. And we know that there were so many uh, who brought you to this day, parents and godparents. Uh, this is the opportunity to support our young people even more, to make sure that they're able to come here to Mass and continue to receive the sacraments faithfully and to put into word and deed the faith. But parents, godparents, we had religious formators, we had uh, youth group coordinators, confirmation class sponsors. Let's give all of them a nice round of applause as well. Uh, and of course, this occurs under the leadership of a pastor uh, who loves you very dearly and who's always working to make sure that the Lord is given to you. Let's thank your pastor, Father Rick Holly. Before the final blessing, I always give any any words, Pastor. Any uh, anything you want to add? I'll say what I always say when a bishop is present. <laughs> Bishops are the successors of the apostles, so when we have a bishop in our presence, we have one of the successors of the apostles with us. So we thank you for taking the time to be with us and to travel out the bowl uh, to confirm our young Very welcome. So uh, at the end of Mass, we'll process out, but we'll come right back in. Uh, so the plan, as I understand it, for those of you who are just confirmed, we're going to do one group shot, okay? So right after I depart, uh, Vicki and the team will get you assembled up here. We'll do one photo like that. Uh, and then after that, we'll do a couple stations, I think, um, where you'll get your photo set up and with the group of you know, family or your sponsor, whoever you want to be in it, and I'll walk back and forth and uh, be in the photo. I'll kind of photobomb your picture, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, remember, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. One more time. Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, you are, are welcome, welcome here. here. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. All your heads for blessing. May God the Father Almighty bless you, whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. Amen. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power and the confession of the true faith. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God.
as we get the group picture settled, I want to um, help give some instructions for when we do the family photos. After the candidates take their group photo, everyone is, all the candidates are gonna be asked to go back into their rows where they were for confirmation. We're gonna have them come out as if they're receiving first or communion, um, and we'll have two stations, one on the side of the candle and one on the side of the risen Jesus, and we'll have you guys set up. Um, please make sure that anyone you want in those photos are ready at that time so we can uh, have a nice, easy procession in. And there is a reception afterwards, so if you're not taking photos, please come over to the gym for cake and punch, and we are happy to have you over there. Thank you.